Hello and welcome to Guinea's World Records. I'm Ian Wright and do we have a show for you tonight. We've got staff the world over on the lookout for people, genuine people who want to break unbelievable records. Here's a taste of what's coming up. On Guinness World Records tonight, you'll meet the man that could eat you out of house and home. Will this be the last straw for a big mouth who's trying to gobble his way into the book? Kate and Ian have a floating role in a brand new record attempt. And we find a man who could really use a manicure. We've got some awesome stuff on the show tonight, and the woman who tracked all these people down is with me. Kate Charman. Thanks, Ian. Well, you won't believe what I found for you tonight. We'll meet the world's chubbiest baby. At 18 months, he weighed five stone. We'll link up with 300 formation skydivers as they clutch at a new world record. And we meet the man who travels at 150 miles per hour on his own two feet. Well, for our first record attempt of the night, Kate's found us a bizarre story. What is it, Kate? Well, Ian, if you live next door to the family we're about to meet, your corner shop would always be empty. This may look like an ordinary street in Northampton, but living at number four, number six, and number 23 are the world's most gluttonous family. They are Tony, Melvin, and brother-in-law, Sean. They're the young generation of a family that all hold records for speed-eating food. And the man responsible for the gluttony gene is Peter Dowdswell, father to the boys and holder of 80 Guinness records for speed-eating a revolting list of food. Gherkins, alvarils, mashed potatoes, raw eggs, boiled eggs, fried eggs, uh, grapes, pancakes, sushi, prunes, prawns, shrimps, it's endless, it just goes on endless really, food eating records. Peter is king of the crammers because of his amazing movable gullet. It's just to move it over. You can move it over, but when you're drinking that, eh, you open one gullet for drink, you open the next gullet for food. If you're invited to tea at the Dowdswells, it'll be a short-lived affair. Ready? Go! You've seen the household with the food bill that must run into the thousands, but now it's time to meet the man who's bred generations of gluttons. Ladies and gentlemen, the daddy of them all, Peter Dowdswell. Hey, Pete. How did it all start? I got conned into having a go at a yard of owl. And the first time I broke the world record, it's just snowballed from there. What did you, what did you do then? Did you drink? I what? drank a three and a half pint yard of owl. In four seconds. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, could you just run that by me again, please? Uh, three and a half pint yard of owl in four seconds. Is that one of those long things yeah, with the, the measure of yards, yeah. at the bottom? You've, you've held over 80 Guinness World Records. Why would you carry on? Being, being all sponsors for charity, you raise money, a lot of money for kids. Do you raise a lot of money? Yeah. Um, uh, have you got a figure on how much you raise? Uh, well, we know it's in the hundreds of thousands. Is it? Yeah. So, how come you're not fat, you know? <laughs> seriously? It's, seriously, it's just a natural thing. I don't seem to put weight on me. Boys do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> when you was younger, did you have a big appetite or did you just... No, I've never been really a big eater. You've never been a big eater? No. <laughs> have you just got a capacity for it? I think I have in me records, yeah. Yeah? Is there anything you won't eat? No, there's nothing I won't eat, but he... The only thing I would say, that when we do this eating, is be very cautious because it is dangerous. What do you mean dangerous? Like you have to train for it? How do, well, you, yeah, we, how do you train to eat food? We go for medical checkups to make certain because it is dangerous. If it goes down the wrong hole, you can choke and do yourself a complete lot of damage. You've got this thing what you do with your gullet. Can, can you just show the audience this thing? Yeah. How does, that, how does that help you? Does that help you in any way with anything uh, you do? Yeah, because you've got one side goes down drinking, one side goes down eating. And you don't have to move it by your hands. You just open it normally when you're drinking or eating, so you can do it with speed. You can just, like, like, like I'm going like this. 
That's it, and it's open. And then what does that mean? You can I smash can throw something beer down? down without swallowing food down, just throw the food down. Okay. Peter's going to try and break three records in one tonight. In front of us here, we have an ordinary three course meal of oxtail soup, mashed potatoes, bangers and beans as a main course, and prunes for pudding to aid digestion. Most of us could eat that as a normal meal, but Peter's a little bit special. Come with me. <laughs> He's going to try and eat this. A pint of soup, a pound of mash, half a pound of sausages and beans, and 50 prunes, all in under a minute. Yes, you heard me correctly. Is there anything you need to do to prepare yourself? Prepare <coughs> to eat? Just uh, take my chicken bell off and mash the pota potatoes and beans together. Feel free, my friend. 50 prunes. That should help you later on, though, don't you think, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say before we go on, are the prunes for that reason? Because, you know, that is a lot of food and, you know, the prunes does aid digestion. Well, Michael. <laughs> Are you ready with a timer, mate? <coughs> I'm ready. Okay. Am I starting? Am I going to do three, two, one? I'm so excited. Three, two, one, go! Oh my gosh. A pint of soup. Go. Five seconds. Go, ten. How long, Mike? How long, Mike? Fifteen seconds. <laughs> 20 seconds. You got the time, Pete. You got the time, Pete. 25. On, Pete. Get it down, you Gregory, my son. 30 seconds. Go on, Pete. 30 seconds. Go on, Pete. Uh, he's scraping 35. it up. 35. He's scraping it up. 40. Go on, Pete. 45. Pete, you got 15 seconds for the prunes, Pete. You got 15 seconds. Go on, Pete. 50. Go on, Pete. Oh. 55. 55. Go, Pete. Go, Pete. Go, Pete. Go, 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 So. <laughs> Peter, I don't care any. That is an unbelievable effort. That is an unbelievable effort. Every lady. Pete, do you, why do you think that you didn't actually finish the whole lot in a minute? Uh, no excuses, only that the potato has been used is powdered potato, not fresh potato. Well, what can I say? I'm, I'm gutted. I, I, wish I, I wish I could have ate those for you, I saw you. Oh, no, no, there's only about 15 prunes left there. Out of 50, that's not bad. Should we just... <laughs> Should we take a look back? You want to see what, you want to see what happened now? Let's take a look back at it and have a look at Pete going for it. The soup seemed to go down well, Pete. <laughs> it's gone. Was you, you happy with that? Oh, I was happy with all of it. You had a little pause there, Pete. Well, is that because it's clinging to your throat? Yeah, it was because the actual potato was actually clinging. What about when you you done the, you, your head back and kind of went... That was trying to... Yeah, here it is, here it is. Down, yeah. Is that it? Look, look. <laughs> it was actually clung into the throat itself. That cost it. That cost it by doing it. Yeah, but look, 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 look. Would you be prepared to come back if we got the right potatoes and and try it again later in this later in the series or something? Yeah, by all means. Oh, lovely. Well, anyway, it was a valiant attempt. As far as I'm concerned, he's still the gastronomic daddy of them all. Peter Dowdswell, everybody. <laughs> OK, we're off to America now to see another amazing record attempt. Some people say that Americans have big mouths, and there's a guy who seems determined to prove it. I'm here with Jim Perot from Whittier, California. We've heard a lot about your existing Guinness records, but mm -hmm. you're here tonight because of your unique ability to expand a certain part of your body in a way that others cannot. Tell us what that is. That is my mouth. I can <laughs> expand my mouth and put a lot of miscellaneous objects into my mouth. Like what kind of things? Uh, I've got the world record for cigarettes. I've got the world record for cigars, pipes. And I also have the world record for straws. 
Now, you don't have a, I'm looking at you, your mouth does not look that big to me. How can you do this? Well, I, it is a normal, I'm a normal guy, I got a normal sized face, but uh, I can dislocate my jaw, that's the trick. Doesn't that hurt? Uh, it does hurt, it hurts uh, a lot. But uh, doing this for so many years, the whole thing is, is how to control your pain in your face and dislocate the jaw, and then when you take the straws back out, it, it goes back, in the, back into its socket, hopefully. Now <clears> explain <throat> what is going to happen tonight. What I'm gonna do right now is I've, I've got 150 straws, which is a world record. I'm gonna dislocate my jaw, pop it in, and pop these straws into my mouth, and then you're gonna put one final straw in there, which will break the world record to 151. Here they are. They're standard seven and three quarter inch drinking straws, and they are bundled together so that Jim can get a good mouthful. <laughs> Before the show, we actually measured the circumference of Jim's mouth. It's eight and three quarter inches, and the straws are 11 inches. So Jim's mouth is two and a quarter inches smaller than this bundle that he's gonna try to jam in there. Jim, are you ready? I've been ready. All right. Well, I've been waiting, so good luck and okay. be careful. All right. All right. We want to remind you again, do not try this at home. This is very dangerous. So it looks like Jim's starting on that left side. Oh, you can see how difficult it is to get that right side in now, even though the left side is cleanly in. Looks like he's close to getting them. Maybe a couple on the... Oh, Mike, he's having a little bit of a rough time with all those straws on the right side. He's trying to shove them in, both with his hand and with the pressure from his head. And it looks like there are a couple on the downside that are not quite in. He's getting those. Shoving them in because he's got to make sure that they're all in his mouth. It's not a good, not enough just to have most of them in. There goes the last one that looks as though it's exposed. Oh my gosh, it looks so painful. Gee. Oh my lord. Are you all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's one of us that's all right. Yes! That's 150. Let's see, one more to go for a new Guinness record. I just shoved this one in here? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. In the, in the uh -huh. center? Uh -huh. Oh, that's, that's shoving another one out. Oh, I'm gonna let you do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is the 151st straw that's going in. This will be for the new Guinness record, but it's gotta go in. Oh. A new Guinness record! 151 straws! Well, right now, you're just kind of psyching yourself out for a, a lot of pain in the next five minutes, so you're kind of, what you want to do is kind of roll them in. What's the moment that you actually dislocate the jaw? Right, right now, they're going in, I'd say right about, and I'm just about the end is when I, hit, I feel the, it's like a little snap I hear inside of my head, and the jaw just kind of comes out of its socket, and right about there is when I just started getting this last scrunch in, right about there, it'll, it'll actually just dislocate it. It takes a lot of pressure on the lower jaw bone, and it snaps right up. When did you discover you could do this? Well, when I was three years old, I used to put my feet in my mouth. <laughs> and uh, my mouth. Glad you gave that up. I know. <laughs> and that's when I found I could dislocate. There it is, though. Wow. Jim Perrault. Yeah. You set the record, you broke yeah. the record. Jim Perrault, congratulations. Yeah. A new Guinness record. Nice official, Americans have got the biggest mouths in the world. Guinness World Record holders aren't any different to you or me. To prove this every week, I challenge you at home to work out which of the members in the studio audience is a genuine record holder. One of these three people really wants to pick me up, but which one is it? After the break, you'll find out. And oh yeah, you'll see some of this. On Guinness World Records tonight, you'll meet a baby that outgrows its clothes quicker than any other kid. 300 people get up close and personal as they plummet towards the earth. And this man claws his way into the book with the world's longest fingernails.
Welcome back. The world records we find come in all shapes and sizes. But in America, the land where big is beautiful, Kate's found an amazing story. Yes, Ian. At birth, the average baby weighs seven pounds, seven ounces. When Zachariah Strenkert was born, he weighed a little more. But there was no way of knowing he would one day set an incredible Guinness record. Zachariah Strenkert was not considered unusual at birth, as he weighed ten pounds, six ounces. However, as Zach began to grow, he would sometimes pull a pound on a week, and during a growth spurt, as much as an inch overnight. At certain points, I would have him to the breast almost all day, for a few days, and then it would stop, and we would be back to the normal nursing cycle. And after that, he would be larger. At six months, Zach needed adult nappies, and his parents became deeply concerned for his health and well-being. We suspected something was wrong uh, when he wouldn't stop growing. He was uh, excess of 68 pounds at uh, 16 months old, and it was scary, and we wanted to know some answers. Zach's parents were extremely worried about the cause of his size and had great concerns for his health. Local doctors were unable to diagnose the problem, so his parents turned to geneticists for help. They reacted by running a spectrum of tests and diagnosed that he suffers from a rare condition. Zach has the simpson gulabi bemel syndrome. This is an X-linked recessive disorder, so it appears predominantly in male children. They will be the affected individuals, while the females will be the carrier for the disorder. The disorder is expressed early in the prenatal life by excessive growth in the fetus. Zach will be a very tall adult. He could weigh as much as 300 pounds and be as tall as 7 feet. At 17 months old, Zach entered the Guinness Book of Records as the world's biggest baby. With a height of 36 inches and a weight of 70 pounds, that's nearly five stone. Today, age three, he measures three foot nine inches and weighs over eight stone, with a skull larger than his mother's. Zach has a normal appetite for a three-year-old unless he's experiencing a growth spurt. Like breakfast, at one point, if I got three Cheerios in his mouth, I was lucky. And as a regular mom, I'd always be worried, you gotta eat, you gotta eat, you know? So now I know, okay, if Zach's not eating, he doesn't need it right now, his body's not growing, he's maintained. But if he's telling me, mommy, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I know he's growing. The contrast is startling, as Zach is three times the size of an average three-year-old. Being big doesn't just affect Zach. People used to come up and say really horrendous things to me. You know, he's going to hate you when he grows up. You know, you're feeding him too much. He's going to have a heart attack. He's going to this, he's going to that. Whatever Zach's size or appearance as he grows up, he'll always be able to rely on his family. Aww. The secret to me staying so positive and just hanging on through all this is that I love my son. And I just wanted to make sure he was all right. When Zach gets older, I want him to know that no matter what he looks like or how big he gets, he will always be loved tremendously by, by us. That is an unbelievable story. Will he ever stop growing? Well, Zachariah will keep growing, but as he gets older, he'll grow in height as well as weight. Well, we wish him the best of luck. Before the break, we ask which one of these three people wanted to pick me up. Well, will a real record holder please reveal themselves? <laughs> this is Barry Burton, and he wants to set a brand new world record. Okay, Barry, come, let's go. You guys already, you guys already hold a world record. What is it? It's a 24-hour team bench press record. We benched four and a half thousand tons between a nine-man team from the British Drug-Free Powerlifting Association. I know you've come here to set a new record, and I don't really like it. So come and tell us what is it? It's a speed record bench pressing a person. Bench pressing a person. Yeah. What person? Well, we looked around the audience and then thought of you. <laughs> I had a feeling, but I, had a feeling I was going to say that, you know. That's why I'm not really too keen on this one. So, 
you're going to use Kate as well? Well, we thought there's two. Well, it would only be fair to yeah, choose bring Kate, Kate as well. In as well. <laughs> so the next king. Yeah, I'm not too keen on it because you know I've got to sit astride there and everything. Right? Two of the boys that are going head to head. You know who, who are they? What's the name of us? Lane Schnook is our biggest of the team members. Six foot eight, twenty and a half stone. Ah, oh, steady, Lane. <laughs> nice to meet you, my friend. And, and this, this is Matt Saunders, who's our current We've got... British, European, and world hundred kilo powerlifting champion. What I say is a good job that you're not doing the Vanessa show tonight. <laughs> so that Vanessa <laughs> would have been <laughs> <laughs> So this is the deal. These guys are going to bench press us as many times as possible in a minute. The winner will hold a brand new world record for the most bench presses of a person. I don't really feel too comfortable about it, to be honest. Where can I hold, Lane, where you're going to be comfortable with? Okay. Evening. Here. Hello. <laughs> Let him just do a practice. -y. Let me see. Just a. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is bucking bronco stuff. Okay, we've got paramedics standing by in case we're dropped. In case we're dropped. <laughs> My lawyers. <laughs> My lawyers are standing by in case I'm dropped. Where were your lawyers when Harry Redknapp dropped you then, Ian? <laughs> What's your mouth, please? <laughs> Michael Feldman, uh, Guinness judges standing by. Mike, are we, we both the, the same weight here? You are now. We've added weights to Kate's bench. Both benches, obviously, are the same weight, and now you're equal. Let's get it on, Lane. Three, Lane's gonna beat him anyway. two, one, go! <laughs> I'm beating you, I'm beating no, no, you! No, no, Fifteen no. seconds! <laughs> Go on, man. You're gonna beat him, Lane. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god, Lane. Keep going, Lane. Don't stop. <laughs> Lane, Lane, don't stop. Come on, seconds. Go on, Lane. Have them up, mate. Come Go on, on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. OK, our judges are counting the amount of bench presses to see who got the new record. Let's look back at the replay and see how well they've done. <laughs> Lane, look, started really fast. And Matt, Matt you've gone for the <laughs> steady... We've got Did nice, you... smooth action yeah. going. Yeah, but I'm riding with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm riding with him. You were going there, weren't you? I was going. But Matt, you, you got a consistent, like, flow there. Is that how you went for it? I tried to do one a second. But uh, in the end, you know, after about 45 seconds, I was, I was wiped out. And <laughs> like, look, Lane, Lane didn't go for that ploy. I Thinking... tried to do 10 a second, but it didn't quite work out. Like, Lane, what do you think? You might have just picked it. Just, I think, yeah. <laughs> Michael Frodman, our Guinness judge, has got the results. Uh, can I have them, please? Don't look, no one. See, look, look, Lane, see? <laughs> Let Matt see it. <laughs> <laughs> Matt done 45, which I still think is a great number of. <laughs> but a brand new world record goes to Lane with 56 reps in a minute. Now, if you have a thing about snakes, look away now. You're about to meet the biggest snake in the world, with the world's most inappropriate name. Her name is Baby, and it takes nine people just to pick her up. She's an astonishing 27 feet long. 
and at what could loosely be described as a waist, 28 inches around. And the scariest thing is that when we filmed her, Baby was in her six-month hibernation period when she doesn't eat at all. When she comes out of it, she'll add 30 to 50 pounds to her weight and four inches to her girth. A Burmese python native to Asia, Baby is the biggest draw at a reptile park in America. Her owner, Lou Godano, got her when she was a young lass of just 14 feet. Baby is 21 years old. A normal lifespan of a Burmese python is right around 20 years old, so she's, a, she's an old girl. Pythons kill by constricting around an animal and suffocating them. Their table manners are revolting. They unhinge their jaw and forcibly swallow their entire meal whole. It takes them more than a week to digest their one-gulp meals. Baby only eats for six months of the year. But when she does, she does so with gusto. She'll eat five to six 10-pound chickens every two to three weeks. Pythons can be vicious, but Lou thinks diet is what makes Baby so docile. I feed Baby dead chickens only now. Um, if, if a big constrictor like that doesn't have to go through the killing process, it keeps their aggression down. And that's a, another reason why she is so, so gentle. A couple of weeks ago, we met a woman with the longest fingernails in the world. I thought that was a record that would never be beaten. I was wrong. Have a look at the bloke that Mark Thompson's found. I'm here with Sridhar Chilal, and I know what you all want to see. Sridhar, please show us what's in the bag. This is Sunil Narkar. He'll be translating for us. Sridhar doesn't speak any English. Uh, the first question is why? He just wanted to be a different person than an ordinary man. So that, and it was a challenge somebody gave him. I'm looking at your fingernails, and this is remarkable. How long have these nails been growing? Since 1952, he has been growing those for the last 46 years. Wow. You know what? We've all got a thousand questions about what life is like for the man with the world's longest fingernails, so our cameras followed Sridhar after his arrival from India. The man with the world's longest fingernails, Sridhar Chilal, draws attention. You would like to take some pictures? Passing through our customs inspection, he's asked the question he's been asked a million times before. So what's in the bag? Sridhar Chilal gingerly removes the protective bag, revealing his most prized possession. If I broke a nail, it would be such a great shock for me. I would probably have a heart attack. So how does the man who's been growing his fingernails for more than four decades get around? To begin with, his wife never leaves his side. I knew if I married him, I would have to help him all the time, and I accepted that. Sridhar knows he's lucky to have a wife at all. People hated me because of my long nails, and then it was time to get married. Nobody wanted to marry me. I spent almost seven years looking for the right girl. The long journey from rural India demands rest, but unfortunately, sleep for Sridhar is a waking nightmare. Because of the tremendous weight of his nails, he has to carefully change position every 30 minutes, or his muscles will begin to ache with pain. For the last 35 years, I've never had a sound sleep because I'm always having to change position. I have to be very careful when I'm in bed to see where his hand is, so I don't break a nail. I don't get much sleep either. Sridhar's everyday routine presents a myriad of problems, from brushing his teeth, to shaving, to getting dressed. 
But the most tedious part of his routine is the daily cleaning of his nails. First, they are rinsed and scrubbed with warm water. Then they are hung to dry. Treedar blows on them to hasten the process. Next, they are laid on a table and carefully rubbed with boric acid to prevent mold from growing on them. Everything is done with his right hand and with the help of his wife. Sridhar requires custom-made jackets which allow his fingernails to pass through a wide sleeve that has a zipper sewn into the side. But the man with the longest fingernails is anxious to see Los Angeles, and it's time to become a tourist. When I go out, I have to have my wife on my left side because if somebody pushes me, my nails would chip, and that worries me. Enjoying a casual lunch with his nails masked in a bag, you'd never know that this man is in constant discomfort, a direct result of the long nails. It is very painful. There is constant pain in my five fingers, in my head, in my hand and wrist, in my elbow and shoulder, and on the other side, because my five fingers are turned this way. They're never straight. They're permanently deformed. In India, if your name goes into the Guinness Book, you are a very famous person. And then when I was on TV in India in 1990, I became even more famous. Now Sridhar will undoubtedly become even more of a celebrity. It's been a while since Sridhar's nails were measured, so prior to the show, our Guinness judges re-measured each of your fingernails and since there's no instruction manual for measuring something like this, we decided to use a thin string to give us an accurate measurement, or at least as accurate as possible. Considering the coils and the curves we have to contend with, the strings seem to be the perfect solution to this problem. It can be delicately applied, and our worst nightmare was to cause a nail to chip, to break, or to crack. Once each fingernail was measured, we carefully measured the string with a ruler. Here's the official Guinness measurement. The thumb alone is 56 inches long. The index finger is 43 inches. The middle finger, 46 and a quarter inches. The ring finger, 49 and a half inches. And the pinky is 47 and a half inches. The combined length, Sridhar, is 20 feet, two and a quarter inches. <laughs> Our congratulations. I'm sure you have many years of growth ahead of you. But before we go, you must do me a favor, all right? I'm sorry, please. Please indulge me. This will be the world's worst sound of nails on a blackboard. I had to ask the man with the longest fingernails to give me one loud, long screech. Sridhar? Knock yourself out, Sridhar. Uh. <laughs> Thanks again to Sridhar Chilal. Oh, makes me feel itchy, man. Oh. So while I scratch myself with the world's most normal fingernails, we'll take a break. When we come back, you'll get to see some amazing people like these. When we return, will this man with nerves of steel break a speed record in titanium boots? And we'll drop in on 300 skydivers to see if they can stick together long enough to make it into the book. Welcome back. You're about to meet a bloke who wants to break a motorbike speed record of 150 miles an hour. That doesn't sound that impressive, but Kate may just persuade you otherwise. Well, 150 miles an hour doesn't even come close to the speed record for a motorbike. But it does if you're not on the motorbike. Imagine water skiing behind a bike with only a thin strip of titanium between you and the foot-shredding tarmac. We found a man who can more than imagine it. He does it. Sit back and watch the sparks fly. 
When it comes to speed, there's not much you can teach professional motorcyclist Gary Rothwell. But a grey day in Leicestershire is about to witness a record challenge that will astonish even the world-weariest biker. 29-year-old Gary from Liverpool aims to beat his own world record for skiing behind the most powerful production bike in the world. At speeds approaching 150 miles an hour, with only two millimetres of titanium plate to protect his feet, it takes enormous skill. While I'm actually in this position, I can steer from this position as well just by pulling the bike from one side to the other. So if I'm going to pull it to the left, I've got to stick one leg out to the right. Because if I try and pull it to the left, it'll just pull me over to the right then. So I'll put one leg out to the right and pull it over to the left. In a deadly high-speed manoeuvre, Gary will slide from his prone position over the back of the GSX 1300R Hayabusa using no stabilisers. Wearing metal sole boots to skid along the ground, controlling the bike from behind the seat. I've got a kill switch on the back, which obviously cuts the engine out in case the throttle sticks open or something like that. We're having two throttles, it makes it a little bit sticky. And I've got a throttle on the back. Obviously, I'm going to be opening the throttle wide open. That's going to get me to 150 mile an hour plus. Gary needs the full two and a half miles of Britain's longest private runway at Bruntonthorpe to develop sufficient speed to break through his previous best of 150 miles an hour and still have room to bring the bike back under control. If I did come off at that speed, you know, if the bike starts doing cartwheels, if the bike obviously lands on me, it's a big, you know, it's a big Suzuki, that'll obviously knock the wind out of me at, at you know, the least. I might just fall on me back and skid along on me back and at them sort of speeds you've got to keep turning over. Otherwise if I just lie on me back at 150 mile an hour until I've stopped, you know, I'll have no back left and no leather. So if you've got to keep rolling over when you start getting hot, it's oh, 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 the other side, the other side. This type of stunt obviously is very dangerous at any speed basically. I've been doing this for six, getting on to seven years and even I might not walk away from it today. So I've obviously come off once or twice, you can't call yourself a stunt rider and not fall off every now and again. So, touch wood, it won't happen today. There's quite a few stones on the track, you get flicked up, and it feels like when one of them itching in the chest, it feels like you're getting shot. Gary's custom-made titanium boots cost £400 a pair and have to withstand temperatures reaching several hundred degrees. They can only survive eight miles of skiing. With the titanium ones, they're a lot lighter than, than the steel items which I've got as well. So just even hopping on and off the back makes it a lot easier. But it's not all high-tech wizardry. It's a nice te technical shot here of a nice elastic band. Simple things in life do come in handy. It's just helping to shut the throttle off. You see the throttle off. The spring on the back of this just isn't strong enough, so... This is gonna work. Gary has grown to accept the hazards of stunt work, but his parents still find it difficult to watch him perform. My dad's coming towards the track looking for me, and I come past standing on the seat doing a wheelie at about 80 mile an hour, and he just oh, had to turn around and walk away. And my mum was just getting up the steps then, so he, he just basically grabbed and said, oh, don't watch, you know, just walk over here, and shuffled my mum out the way. So he thought I was basically in the, in the process of killing myself. Weather conditions are critical to Gary's survival. If the wind gusts, the rideless bike could be pitched sideways with disastrous results. In a practice run, Gary gets close to his own record, but he's going to have to push it even further. With tension rising, Gary heads back up the two-mile runway to make his record attempt. Remember, this is the world's most powerful production motorcycle. Gary has to step up through six gears to reach his jump-off speed of 80 miles an hour. This is the first moment of risk. Any imbalance here will send the bike crashing to the tarmac. He's down, and the sparks fly. Now he opens the throttle to accelerate towards his maximum speed. 
He's fighting crosswinds that threaten to knock the bike off its line. Steering is made even more difficult by the uneven runway surface. It's almost impossible to see straight ahead, and he can only guess at the speed he's reaching. He's almost at the timing lights. He has to have reached his maximum speed at this point. 156.3 miles an hour. Gary can't stop the bike unless he can jump back into the seat. He's done it, but Gary doesn't yet know whether he's broken the world record until he checks with the adjudicator. Gary has never broken through the 150 mile an hour barrier. Now he's smashed it with a new world record. How did it feel? It, it, it actually feels faster than when I've done it in the past. If someone does try and break this, if they're going to have an attempt at it, you know, give me a shout because I want to be there. I'd like to watch someone else doing it, actually, just see how scary it does look, because it feels scary. So I'd like to just you know, watch it myself. So, with a new world record speed of 156.3 miles an hour, Gary hotfoots it to the nearest puddle to cool off. Hot feet. We showed you the story of two British skydivers who set a new record for spinning upside down. This week we've got a few more, 300 more. They're trying to make the world's biggest ever skydive formation. And don't forget, they're falling at well over 100 miles an hour. Let's see how they got on. For six long years, parachuting groups from all over the world have been trying to beat the world record of 200 skydivers clasped together. The record demands that the divers stay in a single formation for more than three seconds. It's a highly demanding and dangerous challenge that takes place four miles above the earth, where the air is thin and cold, and the smallest mistake can mean certain death. This challenge needs the commitment of 300 experienced divers from around the world, with an average age of 39. The divers gather together in Illinois, USA, to prepare for this exciting and dangerous challenge, organized by Roger Nelson. Yeah, yeah. look, you know what the solution is that? We're back to 17,000. Yeah, exactly. The plan is as simple as it is nearly impossible. The attempt at the formation begins with the core. Seven jumpers with arms clasped leap out of the plane, forming a human bullseye. Immediately, 293 additional divers exit their planes in a series of staggered starts. They maneuver their color-coded bodies towards the center seven, using the incomplete jigsaw puzzle below like a map. If each diver can find their precise position in the football field size pattern and everyone can stay linked up for three seconds, a Guinness record is set. It's 300 foot square in, in circumference and it's a very large platform when you consider it human bodies. And what we've done is design a structural integrity so we can link it up and make it actually fly. Though in a vertical perspective, this thing is actually flying like a magic carpet. A dozen medium to large aircraft have been enlisted to fly in a dangerous tight formation. They'll deliver the international crew of jumpers to their departure zones. It's so high above the earth, everyone's oxygen mask becomes their lifeline. Hey, ready? Three, two, one, green light, exit, exit, exit. The bodies begin dramatically falling in rapid succession. Each diver has little more than one minute to find their specific spot and make a firm grab on the other diver's arm, leg or hand. If just one diver, one piece of this enormous puzzle makes a mistake, the entire formation can break. On the first jump attempt, many of the divers aren't hitting their marks. Roger Nelson expects perfection. And I have the veteran cream of the crop of the world here, and I expect that kind of performance out of them. The record seems like a distant hope after the first jump, and subsequent dives are no better. But the divers continue through great adversity and danger to take on the Guinness Do Challenge, John, let's go, John. and a new formation is choreographed and drilled on the ground. But the only way for the men and women to really perfect their parts is in the air. That's our working time, folks. 
That's all the faster it has to be. Jumping four times a day, day after day, the number of record attempts climbs past 10 and then approaches 20. Organizer Roger Nelson is forced to make some hard decisions. That's a late swoop. See the sideways turn? W what's happening here? I'm not even trying to go fast, and I'm thinking, holy cow, look at the flack I got to go through. Divers who are not making the grade are cut from the team. You all, anything I do ever again, because we told you once, we follow the rules. We make sure these people are safe before you get them all celebrated. They're not checking in with them. Forget it, Andre. Don't even say a word. We told you too many times. Unable to make a 300-person formation a reality, they have time for one more jump. Roger decides to go for the record with 246 skydivers. It's a hard decision as 29 world-class divers won't be making the jump. Other jumps behind us, this is a new jump. Are we ready? Yeah! The skydivers are carried to their departure coordinates. The mood is somber and focused. Let's go down. There we go. The core group jump and are followed by the determined divers who begin to fall for the record. Dropping with precision, each member finds his spot. The divers are linking up and show their drills and training are winning out over tiredness. Remember, they must hold the formation for three seconds. When the last group is in place, the clock will start. The pack looks good. One, two, three. This could be a Guinness record. The formation breaks up after being held a remarkable 7.3 seconds. It looks like they did it, but it won't be an official Guinness record until the judges review the videotape back on the ground. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes! All right. Yes! Well, we'll find out, but I think that's a new world record. On the ground, Judge Gene Collar makes it official. A record 246-way formation was held for a total of 7.3 seconds. An amazing new record set four miles above the ground by a group of talented and dedicated skydivers. Well, after all we've been through tonight, I feel a bit adventurous. Me, Kate, and all the studio audience are off to try and break that record. Join us next week to see if we come back alive. Good night. Good night. Next week on Guinness World Records, we cross two continents in the hunt for the world's tallest man and smallest woman. The human beehive gets a buzz. Kim Goodman challenges two new pupils, and Ian meets a canine heavyweight. Don't bite her! We join this magnificent man in his flying machine and try to keep up with the world's fastest wheelie. It's real people, real danger, and real records on Guinness World Records. <laughs>